Hi, Black Cat Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a horror drama movie named Flatliners. The movie starts by showing Courtney Holmes driving a car with her younger sister Tessa. While Courtney is briefly not paying attention, she crashes into a truck and veers off a bridge, ending up in the lake. This accident leads to Tessa drowning. In the story, it takes nine years for Courtney to become a medical student. During her studies, she examines a patient who inquires if she has experienced the loss of someone dear. Additionally, we are introduced to her fellow colleagues, Marlo and Ray, who are currently attending to a patient involved in an accident. Courtney is in the library conducting research on what happens after we die. While she's there, she notices Sophia, another student, who is crying because she feels overwhelmed by her studies. Courtney approaches Sophia in a kind and friendly manner and they decide to spend time together outside the library. The students are attending a lecture given by Dr. Barry Wolfson. However, during the lecture, they receive a scolding from Dr. Wolfson for not meeting his expectations in terms of knowledge and understanding. Later, Jamie attempts to check a patient's testicles, but he tells the patient that he doesn't like doing it either. At the same time, the nurse arrives and tells Jamie that the patient doesn't require a testicle examination. Then, Jamie discovers that it was simply a prank played by Ray. During their lunch break, Courtney seeks out her colleague Jamie and asks him to meet her in the basement later. Intrigued, Jamie follows her and discovers Courtney there with Sophia. Courtney reveals her intention to conduct an experiment aimed at observing what occurs after a person dies. She requests Jamie and Sophia's assistance in using a defibrillator to momentarily stop her heart for 60 seconds, all while documenting her brain activity. Jamie and Sophia agree to assist Courtney in the experiment, and they proceed with using the defibrillator as planned. As Courtney's heart briefly stops, she undergoes a surreal and extraordinary out-of-body experience, finding herself unexpectedly on the hospital roof. After the 60 seconds pass, Jamie and Sophia encounter difficulty reviving Courtney promptly, causing them to panic. Fortunately, Ray comes across the distressed trio and lends his aid in successfully resuscitating Courtney. Together with Marlo, the group examines the brain scan of Courtney and makes an intriguing discovery. The next day, Courtney brings her grandmother's bread to class and impresses everyone, including Dr. Wolfson, by answering unexpected questions with remarkable knowledge. Later on, Courtney astonishes everyone by flawlessly playing a piano piece. The group concludes that her experience of flatlining has somehow enhanced her abilities. However, when Courtney is alone, she becomes frightened as she sees a vision of someone in her bathtub. Jamie chooses to flatline for two minutes. He envisions riding his motorcycle with his ex-girlfriend Alicia through the city, but she disappears into darkness. After Jamie returns from his flatlining experience, the group celebrates with a party. During the festivities, Courtney and Jamie share a kiss. At the same time, Sophia sees that it's snowing and tells everyone. They all decide to go outside. Jamie and Courtney seem extremely happy in the snow, almost as if they're under the influence of something. As the others watch Jamie and Courtney's exuberance, Marlo suggests that it might be due to the flatlining. Later on, Courtney inquires if Jamie had any unusual sensations or visions upon returning to life, but he denies experiencing anything out of the ordinary. After talking with his colleagues, Jamie becomes a bit reflective as he gazes out of the window. While lost in thought, he spots his girlfriend standing in the middle of the street, looking at him, but then she vanishes. That evening, it was Marlo's turn for the experiment. While Sophia attempts to leave for the laboratory to assist her colleagues, her mother intercepts her and asks where she's going at that late hour. Sophia says she's going to the library, but her mother disagrees and prevents her from leaving the house. In the laboratory, the others are concerned about Sophia's absence but they decide to begin without her because it's already getting late. Marlo flatlines for three minutes. She envisions playing the violin and swimming but also sees the disturbing message, Murderer, written in blood at the pool's bottom, surrounded by jellyfish. While everyone else had a hard time trying to wake her up because too much time had gone by, Marlo finds herself all alone in an empty hallway beside a hospital chair, and there's a man who has passed away sitting in it. In the end, they succeed in waking her up, and the scary dream comes to an end. They gather on a rooftop to talk about what happened, and at the same time, Sophia shows up and really wants her turn next. Despite Ray's objections, Sophia insists on going next. 
During her flatline, Sophia witnesses herself in a classroom posting nude photos of her classmate, Irina, causing her immense humiliation in front of the entire class. After reviving Sophia, the group hastily flees as security guards pursue them, but they successfully manage to escape from the parking lot. Later, the gang attends a rave where Courtney has a distressing vision of Tessa's body submerged in a car filled with water. This moment abruptly snaps her out of the vision. At the moment, Sophia is having fun listening to the music at the party. Out of the blue, she grabs Jamie and tells him that he's really feeling something strong at the party. Then, they get close and romantic in Sophia's mom's apartment. Later, Jamie encounters Sophia's mother and leaves the apartment. Sophia receives a scolding from her mother for allowing someone into her place. Sophia declares her intention to move out and find her own place. Her mother disagrees, but Sophia remains determined to make her own decision. In an extended flashback, it is revealed that Courtney's accident, which resulted in Tessa's death, was caused by Courtney being distracted while driving as she was using her phone. Ray accompanies Marlo to her home, where they have a conversation. Marlo opens up to Ray about a patient named Cyrus, who experienced a jellyfish sting to the face. Unfortunately, Marlo admits that she administered the incorrect combination of medication, resulting in Cyrus's death. The guilt from this incident has plagued her ever since. Ray provides comfort to Marlo, and their interaction escalates into a physical encounter. Jamie hears a baby crying on his boat but finds nothing. Courtney calls him, saying she saw her sister and needs him at her apartment urgently. Courtney records a video clarifying that her motivation for the experiment was not scientific. She becomes increasingly terrified as she hears unsettling noises. Courtney catches sight of Tessa once more and in her fear, she flees to the fire escape. However, Tessa reappears, causing Courtney to tragically fall to her death. At the same time, Marlo has a weird or unusual experience. She's been swimming nonstop for many hours, and when she suddenly remembers something from the past, she figures out what time it is. While she's at her job, Sophia effortlessly solves a Rubik's Cube. The following day, Courtney's friends discover the tragic events that unfolded. Dr. Wolfson inquires whether they were aware of any issues with Courtney, but they deny having any knowledge, concerned that revealing the truth about their experiment could result in their expulsion. Jamie contacts Marlo and informs her that he searched Courtney's apartment and found the computer and notes, but not the phone. Jamie suggests that Marlo should go to the morgue and check for the phone there. Marlo enters the morgue and calls Courtney to locate the phone. The sound of the ringing phone comes from a cabinet, and Marlo opens it to retrieve the phone. Before departing, Marlo notices her name on a list and decides to confront Courtney one last time. After shutting the drawer, she has a vision in which she sees the same message as in her earlier vision by the swimming pool, murderer. While this is happening, Courtney calls Marlo on the phone. Startled, Marlo answers, hears her name, and then abruptly throws the phone. Simultaneously, the lights in the morgue suddenly go out. Marlo picks up her phone from the floor to use its flashlight. As she scans the darkened room, she experiences a vision involving the patient from her initial dream. While Jamie is in the middle of taking a shower, the water suddenly stops flowing. As he begins to put on his clothes, the radio in the boat turns on by itself playing the sound of children's laughter. Jamie quickly removes the radio and cuts its cables to stop the strange occurrence. At the same time, the lights suddenly go out, and when Jamie turns around, he is startled to see his girlfriend. Frightened, Jamie attempts to exit the room but accidentally strikes a window and tumbles out. Although he successfully gets out, he spots his girlfriend behind him once more, causing him to stumble and fall into the water. The four friends gather to watch Courtney's video and are startled to hear her screaming just moments before her fatal incident. Deeply affected by the tragedy, they decide to come clean about their past actions. Jamie admits to abandoning Alicia when she became pregnant out of fear. Sophia apologizes to Irina for her actions, and Irina forgives her. Jamie meets his son for the first time, but Alicia refuses to listen to his apology. Ray confronts Marlo about her manipulation of Cyrus's cause of death, resulting in an argument. Marlo drives off and experiences a horrifying vision of Cyrus trying to suffocate her with a plastic bag, causing her to swerve dangerously close to restaurant patrons. Ray, Jamie, 
and Sophia search for Marlowe and find her car in the hospital parking garage. They rush to the basement where Marlowe has already flatlined herself. Despite their efforts to revive her, Marlowe remains unresponsive. Ray administers an adrenaline injection, and Marlowe starts to regain consciousness. In her near-death experience, she sees Courtney urging her to forgive herself. The four friends give up on flatlining and dispose of the evidence. Jamie chooses to stay nearby for Alicia and their son. At a restaurant, they hear Courtney's piano piece and raise a toast in her memory.